There is victory in the house. I thank you for your victory today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. My, so much that God can do for you today if you'll just allow him. And what a beautiful time of worship. And I appreciate everybody getting involved in the worship and things. I told Stan when we started singing some of the <clears throat> early songs, um, because there's songs sometimes we sing at funerals and things. I said, well, we're not trying to have a funeral today. Old Brother Stevens, um, you know, he had an old saying. He says, I'm not looking for the undertaker. I'm looking for the upper taker. Praise God. And so that's what I'm looking for, the upper taker. Praise God. Thank God. You know, we have the power. And uh, it's a beautiful thing to have power. I never was one to race cars or know much about how to make cars go fast and things. But I do understand that if you have too much power on takeoff, thank God you can just sit there spinning. Praise God. And don't go nowhere. Thank God. In church, I don't want us to just be spinning our wheels. I want to go somewhere. Thank God. We got the power. I want to accomplish something with the power that we have. Praise God. And so we're blessed. We're blessed. If you have your Bibles, I'd like to turn to Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 15. Praise God. Ephesians 6 and 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Deuteronomy is 33 and 25 and verse number 27. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. And as thy day, so shall thy strength be. The eternal God is thy refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust, thee out, thrust out the enemy from before thee. And shall say, destroy them. And then Luke chapter 15, verse number 22. But the father saith unto his servant, Bring forth the best robe, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. And last, Romans chapter 10 and verse number 15. And how shall we preach except, we, except they be sent? And as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Thank God. So today I'm bringing you some glad tidings of some good things. I want to preach from this thought this morning. Thank God. Dancing in shoes you did not buy. Dancing in shoes you did not buy. If you weren't here Wednesday night, I preached on learning how to dance in the rain. Praise God. And that's something to just try to help you to understand we can always have a dance. Thank God. So let's ask God's help. Lord, we need help today. We pray that we can minister to every need in the building today. I let nobody leave here the way they came. Let us all leave here dancing, God, and realizing that we're on the right path. We just need to keep pressing. In Jesus' name, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We thank you today for all that you do. Praise God. Thank God. God bless you. You may be seated, and my burden is that someone will obey the gospel today and let it set you free and let you leave here today dancing in shoes that you did not buy. Thank God. Dancing in shoes of joy. The gospel was purchased with the precious blood of Jesus. Thank God. The gospel that set you free is also the, the shoes that you are able to tread upon scorpions and bruise the head of the Satan. Thank God. When God filled you with and put these gospel shoes on you, when you obeyed the gospel, thank God you got your feet shod with the gospel the preparation of the gospel of peace. Thank God, because when you obey the gospel, thank God, you get some shoes, thank God, that can dance, thank God, all over the sins of the past and over the addictions, over whatever had you bound. Thank God, you can dance on those things today. On this Sunday morning, I've come to encourage every person here today. It's time to get your dancing shoes on. Praise God. Now, we live in a turbulent time, and I understand that um, with the hurricanes and with the pandemic that won't go away, thank God, never has in my life have I seen so much, thank God, distress in the world, thank God, nobody with any answers. You know, normally when there's a war, you're hoping that you have some victory in it. And all of the other crises that can come in life, thank God, that we can rebuild and things. But it seems as though there is no one that really has an answer for what our world is going through. The world seems to be becoming more hopeless every day. Because, but the truth of the matter is, is that the gospel we preach, thank God, is the answer to the cry of all the confusion and all of the hopelessness that this world feels. Because tough times not only make great men, they, uh, they help to, us to learn how to dance in the rain. They help us to learn how to be an overcomer when nobody else understands why we're overcoming because there's something inside 
a God that nobody can take away. Praise God. There's something burning in us that says, thank God, I'm going to make it. Praise God. I'm going to get up one more time. I'm going to keep on going. I'm not giving up. Thank God. The gospel is the answer to the cry for peace and help and deliverance because at Calvary, Jesus paid it all. So you can leave here today with peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, dancing in the gospel shoes that God gives you when you are filled with His Spirit because when you obey the gospel, thank God, you get something to dance about. You get something to praise about. You get something to live for. Thank God. When you get God in your life, thank God, He has promise that according to thy day so shall thy strength be thank god whatever uh, kind of road life has taken you down thank god he's got shoes for that road thank god if you need iron shoes he's got iron shoes if you need shoes of brass whatever you need thank god he's got what you need today he has an answer for your situation because he is working thank god when jesus became flesh thank god he walked uh a mile in your shoes. You know, it's been said, you don't really know how to understand a person until you've walked a mile in their shoes. Well, when God became flesh, thank God, He walked in flesh so that He understands what you go through. He understands how flesh, and the beauty of it is, is that He was tempted in all points like as we, yet without sin. Thank God. And so today we can have shoes that have been tried and proven that they can overcome because He has won and we can win. Praise God. In 1964, Billy Mills ran the 10,000-yard meter race uh, for the U.S. Uh, Olympic team. But the committee for the U.S. team um, only brought shoes for the races they thought that somebody could win. Thank God. And so when Billy went to get his shoes, they said, well, we're sorry we don't have any more shoes. Thank God, because we only have enough for the ones that we feel can be competitive in their race. And so he found somebody and he barred their shoes. Thank God. And, and Billy Mills with barred shoes, thank God, won the, for the Americans the first time ever and ever since then, too. He won the gold medal in the 10,000 meter race, thank God, in somebody else's shoes. Thank God. But basically, what I'm trying to tell you today is, is that there are some shoes that you can put on, thank God, that can change the whole outcome of everything that you're going through today. Praise God. As a child of God, we're wearing shoes we didn't buy. Thank God. Don't look at me and think I'm something. Don't look at me and think I'm some righteous person, that I'm just some good guy. Thank God. I wasn't but anything but a sinner saved by grace. But someday something got on my feet. Praise God. Something got in my heart. Thank God. And our feet have been shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In the text of the Old Testament, God wanted Israel to know that they were fixing to go into the promised land. And he just told them, he said, it doesn't matter what your day is, whatever your situation is, according to your day, so shall your strength be. God knew there would be battles to fight. He knew that there were some things that he, they were going to be conquering. And so he wanted to give them uh, whatever they needed to overcome whatever situation they were in thank god and it's no different today god knows what you need so you can have the victory today you don't have to wonder i wonder if god can help me today he already sees he already knows thank god he is the one that has promised i will never leave you i'll never forsake you thank god i'll always be there with you first corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 13 he says there have no temptation taken you but such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above your able, but will with every temptation make a way of escape that you might be able to bear it. Thank God. All through the Bible, we see God showing up with the supernatural power, and that's where that we become different. Thank God. You know, there's a lot of people sitting in churches today. Thank God. But they went there because they just knew that that's a nice thing to do. When we come to the house of God, we come there expecting the supernatural to happen. We're expecting to have an encounter with the supernatural. We're expecting things to be touched and things to be changed because of the supernatural power of God. And so it is amazing what happens when we begin to turn our lives over to Him. And all through the Bible, we see how that God took the least, thank God, and done the greatest things with Him. Praise God. When you look at Moses, thank God, when he had his burning bush experience, you know, at, uh, he had to take off his shoes because he was on holy ground. And Moses was never the same after that encounter. Thank God, God is really ready for you to 
take off your shoes, thank God, and put on a whole new pair of shoes and to realize that, thank God, it's time to uh, understand that we need to have that burning bush. We need that supernatural thing to happen to us that only God can do. God is ready to, to help us to understand that he can do more for us. We can put uh, uh, put a spring in your step can put joy in your heart thank God you know there's a lot of kids that used to probably now they don't worry about it but when we were uh, hearing about things you know they had shoes called Air Jordan he's got everybody had to have a pair of Air Jordan shoes thank God but I'm telling you, we got something better than Air Jordan shoes for today to give you if you want to take it child of God it's time to realize that you've got uh, what you need when you obeyed the gospel you've got shoes can give you the power to touch your world, the power to change other people's lives. And what you have to understand is what happened to Peter and John after the day of Pentecost. Thank God. And suddenly they realized that they were walking in new shoes. Thank God. And Peter and John went up together at the uh, temple at the hour of prayer. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb, whom they laid daily at the gate, begging for alms. Thank God. And he gave heed. And then Peter said, look on us. Thank God. Thank God. And he looked on them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Seven gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. But this is the part that I really like because I think this is where that every one of us need to realize that one day he came by us. We were lame and sin. We were struggling in things. And somewhere somebody said, Rise up and walk. Praise God. And the Bible says, And he leaping up, thank God, walking, entered into the temple uh, walking and leaping and praising God. Nobody had to tell him what to do. Thank God, when God touches you, you know what to do. Thank God, the name of Jesus has given you him feet. Thank God that he could dance on. Thank God, a godly boldness prompted Peter and John to do what they did because they took a situation that looked hopeless and something inside of them said, but we have hope. Praise God. And I'm telling you, some of us need to realize it's the hopeless that we can easily reach. It's the hopeless that have the most uh, the need to be somebody to reach out to them. What would happen if we all got baptized with a Holy Ghost boldness and began to give such as we have to whoever we came by because I'm telling you, don't qualify anybody. Just witness to everybody. Just reach for everyone. And God, the church is to be a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. The worst world is sick and tired of dead, dry churches. Thank God, what they need to do is come and experience. And that's why we try to get people to the house of God because once they're here, they, they can't go anywhere else and find what they can find here except in an apostolic church. Thank God. And so when they come dragging their feet, thank God they can leave here dancing in the shoes that God's going to give them. Praise God. It's time that we use the, the sword of the Spirit and the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. And I don't know what kind of fiery darts are coming your way, but I'm telling you, we still are overcoming. We still have the shield of faith. We still can quench every fiery dart of the enemy. And so God loves for us to get bold in our prayers. Thank God, like Joshua pointing to the sun and said, Son, just stand still. i got to finish this battle. Praise God. I mean, there's power enough in all of us to be able to command the Lord as we pray His will, that He will do things that above and beyond what we could even ask, think, or imagine. So God is able to cause the, the sun to stand still. Thank God. It's uh, talking about dancing in shoes that God gave you. It's what caused David to take on a giant. Thank God. He understood that God go with him. And so he was not afraid to own the giant. Thank God. And what we need to happen to each of us is we need to have a divine encounter again. Thank God. Some of us have forgotten. Moses, you know, he felt the call of God on his life at 40 years of age, but he became a failure because he tried to do it with his own strength and help. Thank God. But at 80 years of age, thank God, the supernatural encounter came with a burning talking bush and never was he the same again after he took off his shoes and stood on holy ground. And some of us need to understand that we're on holy ground. Praise God. And if we just would listen to that voice, because there is a voice that's wanting to speak today, somewhere we're going to have to open our ears and hear what the Spirit is saying. And it's not saying, it's not saying, let's try to endure to the end, but it's saying, it's time to go forth weeping, bearing precious seed, 
Doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing our shoes with him. Thank God. When he put shoes, thank God. You know, back Moses, he was never the same after that encounter. Thank God. It's what it's like in some of our lives. It's been way too long since some of us have been on some holy ground. Thank God. We all remember. And sometimes we're living on our memories. But God doesn't want you to live on your memories. He wants you to have a present experience with him. He wants you to be having something today. Holy fire. Thank God. It still works. Thank God, I pray before we leave here today that some of us will get set back on fire. Thank God. And I know that sometimes we come to church, it looks like we're on fire. But the real fire is what burns outside of these four walls. Praise God. The real fire is how you're affecting your world out there. Thank God. The real fire is when we begin to make a difference in other people's lives. And so thank God for the fire we feel when we come to church. It's a wonderful thing. But I'm telling you, the real purpose of the church is to be a soul saving station is to be a rescue center is to be the hospital of the soul It's to be that thing that's reaching beyond these four walls thank god and so i pray before we leave here today that something will get a hold of us thank god but there's another set of shoes that i wanted to tell you about before i close today and that is the pair of shoes that the prodigal son's father had bought for him i don't know what caused the father to go and buy that pair of shoes? Maybe one day he was down praying and he just said, God, I want my boy to come home. The Lord said, well, if you want your boy to come home, why don't you go get him some shoes? Praise God, because he's going to be barefooted. He, if he comes home, thank God, he's going to come a broken man. He's going to come a, a hurt man. He's going to come a man needing somebody to, to be able to have compassion. Praise God. And so the dad made preparation. He Fatted up a calf. Thank God. He got the robe. He got the shoes. Praise God. And sure enough, thank God, it seemed that he had been waiting for the day that his son would come home. And it seemed that everything was ready. All he had to do was for his son to come home. Thank God. And so I don't know what happened. Thank God. It could have been on a, on a Sunday morning. Thank God. When that boy got up to feed the hogs and got in there fixing to eat some slop with those hogs. Thank God that the Bible says that he came to himself. And he said, you know what? Thank God, I can go home and be a slave at my dad's house and eat better than this, live better than this. Why in the world am I going to live this way? Thank God, some of you are relating to what I'm saying right now. Some of you are in that pig pen. Some of you knew what it was. And some said, hey, Nothing could be any worse than this. Thank God, I might as well go down to the church. I might as well go. I know they won't. I know they won't accept me. I know they don't want people like me. But still, I'm going down there. Thank God. There are people outside these four walls that have disqualified themselves from coming to church. They just say, "Hey, they they wouldn't want nobody like me. They wouldn't have me. Thank God, they wouldn't want something like me if they only knew." Thank God, we've got shoes for your feet. Thank God, we're, we've got a welcoming committee. Thank God, we've been praying for you. We've been fasting for you. Thank God, and so it was when that boy rounded that last corner. Thank God. But, you know, the amazing thing was is that he had no idea what was waiting for him. And the world out there has no idea what is awaiting for them at the house of God. And that's why sometimes we fail so miserably because we just don't give them that chance. Thank God. You know, just give them a chance. Thank God. It's not, it's not our call. It's His call. Praise God. But our call is, is to just get them here. Thank God. His call is to, to make the difference. Thank God. While we're standing today, today, thank God, if you would take that first step. That prodigal had no idea what was waiting for him. But when he took that first step towards home, Thank God, every step got a little easier because he broke that, that wheel and he made up his mind, I'm going to go humble myself and do whatever i got to do, but i got to get back to daddy's house. Thank God. But when he got there, thank God, he didn't know what was waiting for him. Today, thank God, you can get out of that valley of despair. Today, you can have your sins forgiven. Today, you can get back on track because I'm telling you, some of you have something shut up inside of you. Thank God that it's time to get it on the outside. Thank God, you need to get your fire back. You need to get your desire back. Thank God, God's got shoes of peace and joy. Thank God, some of you walked in here carrying a lot of stresses. And I'm telling you, uh, if you listened, uh, 
uh, to news and world and the troubles of the world and, and you get all word about politics and all that kind of stuff, I'm telling you, you're going to be in a turmoil. But I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what politics does. You don't need to waste your time trying to march or do anything. Thinking you need to be, if you want to do some marching, they can march around this building. They got to march around your neighborhood. Praise God. Do something that really will make a difference today. Today, thank God. The devil is always saying, wait till tomorrow. But somewhere we've got to understand today is the day. Thank God. Today, God is saying, all you have to do, thank God, is just show up. Thank God. All the product I had to do was just get there. Thank God. Everything else was ready. And I'm telling you, mercy's here.